वेलकम फ्रेंड्स वी आर स्टार्टिंग दिस कोर्स ऑन प्रोडक्शन एंड ऑपरेशन मैनेजमेंट दिस इज द वेरी फर्स्ट सेशन ऑफ दिस कोर्स एंड इन दिस वीक वी आर गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज द रोल ऑफ प्रोडक्शन एंड ऑपरेशन मैनेजमेंट इन एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन वी नो अबाउट मार्केटिंग मैनेजमेंट वी नो अबाउट फाइनेंशियल मैनेजमेंट वी नो अबाउट मैनेजमेंट अकाउंटिंग we also know about human resource management and all these are functional areas of management and the meaning of functional area of management is that we are going to use these functions for performing some of the activities of the organization and these activities must be in line with the overall objective of the organization so that my company my organization can be a top class organization similarly it is also very much required that all these functions must have a proper synergy if that synergy is missing if we all are working excellent in our own domain but without synergy then again there will be a problem that organization may not achieve that excellence which we are looking for so it is important to have highest level of professionalism in each function and at the same time we also need to have synergy with other functional areas in any organization all these functional areas are present but organizations may draw their competitiveness from different functions we know that companies like walmart these organization have achieved superior performance because of their supply chain activities they know how to leverage the supply chain therefore they are ahead of any other retail company in the world we know about chinese organizations they know how to take advantage of operation activities and as a result of that they are producing low cost products and that is the reason of their success we know about various organizations which are known as multinational corporations they know how to market the product hindustan unilever procter and gamble itc so these companies are superior marketing organizations and because of their abilities of superior marketing they are highly successful organization so organizations can be successful because of any particular reason apple we know an organization which knows that how to use creativity of the employees so their human resource policies which are helping them to take advantage of creativity of their people that is the secret of their success so different organizations so one particular functional area may be responsible for your superior performance but at the same time other functional areas are equally important because they create that type of enabling environment under which one particular area excels and that particular area gives you competitive advantage in this particular course we are going to discuss the role of production and operations management and what are the various things what are the various types of decisions we are going to make under productions and operations management and uh, we will see that uh, many organizations with the help of uh, different types of case studies in this course we will see that uh, how organizations have leveraged not only from entire uh, production operation management but from very few elements of production and operation management particularly let's say some organization is known only because of superior quality some organizations are known only because of cost effectiveness some organizations are known only because of their delivery commitments so different organizations have obtained their competitiveness because of some particular reason which may not be the entire operation management but just few elements of operations management so today 
in this particular session the very first session of this course we are going to discuss that what is production and operations management what is production now to understand what is production it is uh, important to see that it is a process of value addition now many a times the value addition is considered that you are converting some raw material into a finished products but we will see that uh, value addition can be of variety of types and uh, you need to understand the wider meaning of value addition and this is one particular reason that uh, japanese organizations understood the meaning of value addition in the right context and therefore they gave a very different perspective of quality management they gave a very different perspective of uh, value engineering and uh, that is one of the very important aspect of production and operation management uh, that we need to understand that what is this value addition what is value addition if we understand this meaning of value addition and particularly what is value and what is non value then we are able to do miracles in our organizations but many a times as manager we are unable to identify that what is value and what is non value and many a times we waste our resources in non value adding activities and when you are wasting your resources in non value adding activities it incurs extra cost it may take more time and therefore you lose competitiveness so rightful identification of value is very very important for understanding or for taking the advantage of production and operations management so this is a process of value addition and we will see that what is the meaning of value addition in our coming slides now going back a bit if you see what are the primary sources of wealth creation so we know that uh, in the ancient time agriculture was the primary source so and particularly if i say from india that uh, we are known as agrarian economy so in india the primary source of wealth creation was agriculture so agriculture and most of the industries were based around agriculture making equipments for agricultural activities keeping live stocks that is also an allied kind of agricultural industry so most of the things were dependent on agriculture or for agriculture so it was the source of uh, wealth creation for india as well as for large number of world's uh, countries but slowly and slowly when industrial revolution took place and after industrial revolution particularly from europe and then to north america the second important source of wealth creation became manufacturing so this is the period of industrial revolution so as a result of that now many people shifted from agricultural activities to industrial activities and industrial output became another important source of wealth creation people started working in the organizations factories mills and uh, large number of uh, distribution activities people started uh, uh, working for various activities which are related to industrial uh, activities around that and that is a second important source of wealth creation it started as i told from europe and then it went to north america and then from there it went to other parts of the globe unfortunately during this period india was under british rule when this industrial revolution was taking place so we could not take much advantage of this manufacturing wealth creation we remained more or less agrarian economy and many of you may be knowing that till date our more than 50% of indian population is dependent on agricultural activities 
though the contribution of agriculture in India's GDP is somewhere around 16 to 17 percent, but 50 percent or more people are dependent on. So, there is a very skewed relationship between the large amount of population which is dependent on agriculture and uh, the contribution of agriculture into the GDP. So, if we want to make India a prosperous country, we need to see some kind of balance that the number of people, the percentage of population which are dependent on a particular sector and the contribution of that sector into GDP should have some kind of uh, asymmetry. But presently, this relation is highly asymmetric. So, therefore, uh, we uh, many uh, times read in newspapers, in media debates uh, that farmers condition is not good in India because of this uh, very skewed relationship that uh, only 15 to 16 percent contribution is coming from agriculture and large number of persons uh, uh, more than 50 percent of population is dependent on agriculture. Manufacturing we have uh, around uh, 17 to 18 percent contribution coming to of GDP, but uh, we see that uh, there are countries which are much uh, smaller than India and uh, close to India and uh, these are countries like Thailand, Hong Kong, Taiwan etcetera, Vietnam. So, these countries are touching up to 30 percent of their GDP from manufacturing activities. So, government of India is also looking to have uh, higher contribution of manufacturing in GDP and particularly government is of the view that uh, SME, small and medium enterprises and micro and cottage. These two sectors need special attention if we want to increase the contribution of uh, manufacturing into the India's GDP and uh, it is also believed that uh, these SME sector, cottage industries, micro industries can be the engine of growth for India, because these industries are capable of employing large number of people. Where we are talking of uh, large plants, uh, medium size plants, uh, so more and more automation is happening. So, when more automation is happening, the need of people are reducing there. So, it is uh, the small, medium or the micro and cottage industry, where we find more potential of employing the people. So, government is giving lot of emphasis on these sectors and the third which is coming that is the services sector. The third important sector of wealth creation is the services sector and India took a good advantage of this service revolution, particularly in the field of IT and IT enabled services. India had the chance of having large number of English speaking youth, we had uh, very talented youth, uh, they were very much mathematical savvy, they were very much computer savvy and as a result of that uh, we saw a very good, a very handsome growth of uh, IT industry in India. So, it became a very popular source of uh, GDP in India and uh, more than 50 percent of GDP in India is coming from the services sector and particularly IT and IT enabled services are the most important source of India's GDP at the moment. Now, the fourth source of wealth creation is also coming that is knowledge. Now, we know that uh, it is the time where knowledge is going to rule the world and as a result those countries which are going to have uh, superior knowledge, those who are having intellectual capital with them, these countries are going to rule the world. These countries will be at the top of the development indexes. So, now countries like South Korea, countries like Israel, countries like uh, uh, where patent filing, IP activities are increasing. So, I can name the China which is immediate labor to India. So, these are the countries where lot of IP related activities are taking place and as a result of that uh, 
these countries are going very fast on that economic development front. So, uh, knowledge is also be going to become a very very important source of wealth creation. Though knowledge is required for agriculture, knowledge is required for manufacturing, knowledge is required for services also, but in that knowledge is considered to be the supporting activity. But now in this particular case knowledge itself is going to be used as a commodity. If I am having a patent, uh, so that patent can be used as a product uh, and I can transfer that patent to you. So, this way it is going to be a very very important source of uh, uh, wealth creation in coming time. The development of countries like Israel is totally based on this knowledge activities. They are one of the fastest country which are uh, having large number of patents. South Korea is another example what a marvelous system they have about protecting their intellectual capital and as a result of that companies like Samsung etc from South Korea are giving good fight uh, to European and American organizations. So, uh, China obviously is a big country, but uh, they also have a very fantastic uh, enabling environment uh, where not only academia, but industries also as well as individuals are also are knowing that uh, what is the potential of their intellectual capital. So, they go for IPR and uh, as a result of that uh, it has become a new source of wealth creation. So, now we know that uh, all these are the different sources of wealth creation. Our focus in this particular course is on this manufacturing which is a very important source of wealth creation. The present contribution of manufacturing in India is somewhere around 18 percent and we want to we means government of India feels that there is a potential the reports say that India can increase its manufacturing contribution up to 25 percent of the GDP. If that can happen, if that can happen, it will solve large number of problems of the country. It will provide employment to large number of youth within our small and micro and cottage industries. So, therefore, we will be focusing on this manufacturing activities that uh, how manufacturing is going to help us uh, and when I am talking of manufacturing, I am though in all these agriculture, manufacturing, services and knowledge, there is a role of value addition, but uh, our value addition discussion will be particularly focusing around manufacturing activities, but uh, everywhere value addition is there, you have seeds, you have fertilizer, you have pesticides, you have field and uh, when you are mixing everything and that value addition gives you fruits, that value addition gives you crops. You have raw material and when you process the raw material, you get a finished product in the form of uh, car in the form of a mobile phone in the form of a uh, shirts, uh, shoes etcetera that is manufacturing activity. You have ideas and uh, you are now able to communicate using your emails, you are able to communicate you uh, through your uh, whatsapp, you are able to communicate through your other profiles that is a kind of service that is being happening. So, now how that idea is being transmitted that is a value addition process. Similarly, we all are having so much of knowledge, but uh, protecting that knowledge so that uh, it can be transferred, it can be licensed, it can be used for some kind of entrepreneurship activity that is also a kind of uh, value addition processing. So, uh, everywhere the value addition is there and only when value addition is there you can use these different sources for wealth creation. Without value addition wealth creation will not be possible. So, the point is that uh, value addition we discuss that value addition is the important thing for the manufacturing activities, but uh, here I am generalizing here I want to particularly emphasize that uh, value addition will always be there whether it is agriculture whether it is manufacturing or services or knowledge creation. But our discussion will mainly be focusing only on this manufacturing and 
some time to the services also. Now, let us see how manufacturing is a value addition process. Now, when manufacturing is a value addition process where you have the raw material and uh, it is not only one raw material there may be multiple raw materials. So, you have uh, different types of raw materials these raw materials are processed and it is also not necessary that only one level of processing is there there may be multiple levels of processing just to show in the form of a simple diagram we have this uh, uh, three boxes only but uh, we may make it uh, more and more complicated and you can see that uh, there may be a raw material which is uh, processed then uh, it is again processed some additional component is added and then it is again processed then it is checked that is also a type of processing and then it is converted into finished products. So, in this three box diagram it is not only that these are the only three boxes these are representation only and you see there may be multiple type of raw materials which may be required in making a particular product you take any simple example you take the example of uh, simple uh, detergent powder which you purchase in your house. Now, in that simple detergent powder you see there are lot of uh, chemical processing through which that powder is made. So, the processing may take uh, multiple steps and then once that powder is ready then another important processing is required for the packaging of that powder. Now, the packaging again may require different type of things whether you are packaging in 500 grams or 1000 grams then on that packaging you require different type of printing also batch number prices date of packing etcetera etcetera. So, all these things are the part of these intermediate stages and all these intermediate stages are nothing but the value addition all these intermediate stages are value addition. So, it is very important to understand that we need to have this kind of value addition activity and that value addition activity is to be properly monitored it has to be properly designed it has to be properly controlled that is operations management. So, all types of input you take it so simply that there are input input is doing some kind of uh, value addition and then value addition leads to output. Now, management of this value addition management of this value addition is operations management, but many a times because uh, as I told you we are living in synergy with other functional areas. So, we also need to extend this circle to our input side and to our operations uh, output side. We also need to decide that how to manage our input and what type of output is required. If I say that synergy is not required, so the responsibility of output will be of marketing people that whatever we will make marketing people had to sell, but that is against the concept of synergy. We need to make those things which marketing requires, so there is a need of synergy here. Then input the purchase people they need to purchase only those things which we require. So, we require a synergy with purchase people. So, that is 
the concept of synergy that from input to value addition to value addition or you can say the conversion and then conversion to output everywhere this synergy is very much required and therefore, we say that manufacturing is a value addition process. Now, as in the beginning of this session I said it is important for us to understand because here we will discuss some examples in books also there will be some examples, but in real life you need to take a call that what is value and what is not value. So, when you have uh, some industry experience lot of consultants come to your organization giving you this kind of uh, knowledge that uh, what are the activities which are you doing having no value addition. Now, this is over a period of time their experience tells that these are value addition activities these are non value addition activities. We do many things in our daily life from morning to evening and uh, if you just reflect on those activities if you just reflect on those activities you will realize that many of those activities which you are doing daily in your life at least 30 to 35 percent of those activities are non value adding activities. So, if we eliminate those non value adding activities from our daily routine it is certainly going to give us more time it is going to make us more happy it is going to help us giving more relaxation, but it is important that you understand that this is a value adding activity or non value adding. So, here to differentiate between these two things that value is something which helps in improving customer satisfaction. Here we are taking this uh, idea of value from the customers lenses we need to change the optics for this purpose. When you use the customers optics then you understand what is value and what is not value and uh, during the course we will discuss one or two examples of rural marketing. When you are developing a product for the rural customers you will realize that uh, we do not understand their requirements properly and therefore, we are not able to satisfy their requirements and as a result we are unable to sell our products because we do many things which are non value adding to them which are not improving their customer satisfaction that way you can understand. So, something which is not improving customer satisfaction is non value. So, you can have a very specific litmus test in that litmus test things which are improving customer satisfaction improving customer satisfaction is value is value and which is not improving customer satisfaction not improving customer satisfaction is non value. So, this gives you a very very direct answer of what is value and what is non value and therefore, you will be able to understand that uh, if you provide if you provide some features to me in a product which I am not going to use which I am not going to use then it may become a non value feature because for that feature you have added the some resources and as a result of that cost has increased. Now, you are charging me that additional cost you must have seen in India very recently the government of India has introduced a system that uh, in televisions whatever channels you want to see whatever channels you want to subscribe you need to pay only for those channels. So, that is like this if you are in North India 
you are into a Hindi speaking land and you are not wanting to have any kind of uh, other language channel, you only want to see Hindi channels, but earlier you were paying for all those channels which were not required. Now, we all know that uh, each one of us has some selected channels, I see only 10 channels, I, so I will surf within those 10, ten channels, some news channels, some sports channel, some movies channels etcetera. So, why I am paying for additional 200 channels which I am not going to see. So, all those additional 200 channels are non value adding activities for me. So, now it is a very good thing that I will be paying only for those channels which I am going to see. So, this is a very simple example to understand that what is value and what is non value. And similarly, when we are developing a product, when we are doing something in the organization. For an example, if in front of a machine, there are long number of products which are waiting for their turn to be processed. Now, as a customer, this queue has nothing to do with me that each product is waiting for 10 minutes for its turn to be processed. So, this is a non value adding activity, waiting or holding is a non value adding activity. So, now my duty in operation management is to eliminate or at least reduce that waiting time, so that my non value adding activity can be reduced. And if I can do this, my operation management is a superior operation management. If I am not able to do this, then I am not able to take the benefit of this course this operation management knowledge. So, in this particular course, we will be discussing large number of principles through which we will be able to eliminate non value adding activities and as a result of that our competitiveness, our productivity will improve. And if that can happen and at the same time, we also need to have synergy with other functional areas. So, on one side we need to have a better operation management. So, that is the internal uh, working for the system and at the same time we also need to have a good system that is mean you have this uh, internal looking for the operation management. So, this is your operation management function and at the same time you need to have good interface with other functional areas which may be finance, which may be marketing, which may be human resource management. So, you need to have a strong internal as well as external orientation at the functional level and if you can do this then your organization will have a superior performance. So, with this we come to end of this first session and uh, in our next session we will discuss some important global trends which are going to affect the operations management. Thank you very much.